what would you recommend to a dinosaur network engineer? I've got over 20 years working on hardware-based networks. Yeah. Um, first of all, I resent dinosaur in 20 years because that's pretty similar, and I don't think I'm a dinosaur just yet, but, uh, but, I, but I, I'm feeling that very much. Uh, Brian, let's, let's start with you. I don't know that you've had a chance to introduce yourself yet. Uh, tell the nice people who you are, and then let's jump into this question about uh, recommendations for dinosaur network engineers trying to keep up after 20 years of doing things the old-fashioned way. Cool. Um, I'm Brian Gleason. I'm here in Austin, Texas. Uh, I work for a, um, as a network engineer for, um, for an integrated circuit design company, um, and I'm right downtown. So at some point, I'm going to get kicked out of this conference room and move into another one, so the background won't be quite as planned in the back. Um, but this one, this, this question actually hit me kind of, it was pretty relevant to me because I've been in this industry for, for 20 years, uh, a little over 20 years on the, usually on the, on the enterprise side. And sometimes enterprises aren't really quick to do, um, anything more than what they've already done, right? It's, it's a, you know, it's a Cisco router, it's a Cisco switch and it's, you know, it's a little spanning tree here, little routing there. And what I, what I found was the uh, the idea of of getting left behind as technology changes was a huge influencer for me. Mm. I, I agree with, uh, with 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 everything there. Uh, there was something Lee said that um, I, I want to echo. Though, that was very wise. Is that there, there, there's sort of never been a better time to fall in love with a new discipline. Like there are so many new technologies now that even if you feel like you've been doing something for the past twenty years. Uh, yes, it's going to require some new studying, but there's so many new technologies, like say public cloud scripting. Um, we're going to, I think, touch on um, AI driven Wi-Fi later on. There's so many things that you can do. And in fact, what's kind of interesting, I think, about scripting in particular is that if you've been in the industry for 20 years, you have so much that you can give to the newcomers coming in. And they have so much to give you because kids, kids now they're learning scripting in school. They're learning Python in school. And in fact, they can teach you scripting and you can teach them the underlying philosophy of networking because that's also not going away. BGP isn't going away tomorrow, right? We still we need to know these things. And it, I think it's, we, we, we talk a lot about um, people that have been in the industry for a long time and, oh no, they've got to get all these new skills oh no but actually what we don't talk about is the fact that people who are coming into the industry now need to know all the stuff that the people who have been here for 20 years need yes. to know about and all the stuff on top it's so overwhelming where do you start like i, I really think the ccna is the hardest exam it's ever been now because there's so much content you can add value there if you've been in the industry for a long time give back to those young people coming in and they will give back to you in scripting it, it, it's it's a really exciting opportunity, I think. Oh, Chris, it, it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, so, uh, in in our house, um, my wife and I have homeschooled our kids for for since they were real little, and my oldest is now getting, is graduating and going off to college. But but this semester for his computer science course, um, I had him go through the CCNA um, exam, and that was going to be one of his one of his goals, right? Take the test, and um, and then write an article and and tell me what you what you thought about it, um, and. I hadn't looked at the CCNA since I was a, you know, a, a little network guy with a, with a punch down toolkit. Right. And I was shocked at how, how, how in depth that exam is. Um, there is just a ton to learn. Um, so I don't know, but maybe that's, that, that, that's a good way to, to do it. Just kind of thinking out loud. Is it, is it to keep that 20 year career um, exciting and fresh, pick up an exam book and just start and just start looking at it, you know, study for exam, pick an exam and, mm. and, you'll be, I think you'll be shot, just amazed at how, at how much there is to learn. Um, it is a different, it is a different era. And I think, uh, I think there's, there is no shortage of technical, technical things that you can pick up along the way. Carol, you, you mentioned you've been at this for 20 years. You got any input here? Yeah, I was about to jump in, but um, I think people maybe who are listening want more practical things like, well, how do I learn Python? Well, just Google Python tutorial. Google is your friend and there's, <laughs> Um, lots of online stuff you can go through and practice. Um, in my company, we're encouraging people to learn Python by every month we have a, a, a challenge. And if you participate in the challenge, you get like 25 bucks. And then we're collaborating to show who did what, who did well, they score it. I don't like the story, that's another thing. But um, the key thing is there's a lot of tools out, Stack Overflow, um, GitHub, so, um, Cisco DevNet. So there's a lot of like, you can't just maybe Brian say, 
start programming and start scripting. I've been in this long enough. It used to be called programming, but now we call it scripting. So much different. Um, <laughs> um, and so it, it was like I started learning Python, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. And I just sat down on the couch with my husband, who's a computer scientist, and he gave me an hour, an hour brain dump on Python. Here's how to set up what you want to do. And then I just modified it a little bit. And so I think a lot of scripting um, is to find a, a program that does mostly what you want it to do and then tweak it to make it work for you and then figure out what are the tools that are good. So there's NetMyCo, there's all sorts of sort of network, assess, uh, network configuration, network automation tools out there. Start playing with them and maybe play with them in your lab and then see how do you um, start bringing them into your company. And there'll be folks that will like programming and there'll folks that won't. And you'll figure out if this is something you like. And if it's not something you like, then find another aspect of it. But um, I think it's that continuing learning process that if you're a network engineer for 20 years, do you want to do the same thing? Are you interested in something new? And then start playing with whatever thing is fun for you. Thank you.